What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 28 of Onshape. I had made this video before then I realized that there's no audio for um, that video, so I had to remake it and here's where this video is today. So what we're gonna do specifically is um, take our file we've created, this part file right here, talk about how to export it and get it to where you can actually 3D print it. So if you already know how to use a 3D printer and you already know how to use STLs and things like that, this video is not for you, move on to the next one and have a good day. But uh, for me, last year, I had to learn the process on how to go from what we've made to a 3D printer. And this is kind of every step in between, specifically if you have one of the Dremel 3D printers. And if you don't, the process will look very similar to you, but just a hair bit different towards the end, but we'll get there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is talk about is, this is the part I want to, I want to print. And my uh, file here, if we look at my workspace unit is in inches. And then if I go to my sketch, you can see that I've, uh, I have one inch at the top, three inches on the, on the long side. I want that one by three to kind of be in your head because I'm gonna talk about it and you'll see in a second. So what do we do here now? I'm gonna hit right click and I'm going to export. Now when you export, we're gonna convert the file type and I'm gonna do also L block in inches and talk about if we export in inches, this for, this file gets kicked out with a native unit of inches and you have to be cognizant or at least learn your system and what native unit it prefers to, to talk into or if you can uh, convert back and forth pretty easily. And then the format here is gonna be all the way down at the bottom and that's gonna be STL, uh, which is stereolithography. It's a super old format for 3D prints. It's just worry about what does the outside of your object look like. Resolution, if you got complicated parts, you might wanna kick that up, but a more uh, high resolution causes your prints to last or take longer to make. So I'm gonna keep that as medium and then click okay. All right, and so when we go over to our 3D printer and we're gonna import this, so this is the Dremel uh, DigiLab 3D Slicer that if you have the Dremel um, 3D printers, you're gonna download this, install it, and upload it. It's gonna ask what kind of printer you have and I have the 3D 45s. And so what I'm gonna do here now is um, go ahead and open this file and do L block inch. And we notice is my block comes in really small. And that's because the native units of my uh, th slicer environment is actually in millimeters. So what I've learned is how to do is when I'm dealing with this material, I want to export it to millimeters rather than inches. So I'm gonna keep that there. I'm gonna go back to Onshape really quickly. And I'm gonna right click, we're gonna export these again, but we're gonna do L block in excuse me, <coughs> shoo, and this time we're gonna do millimeters. So units, millimeters, click okay. The file type resolution is exactly the same, but when I import this over to my slicer, click on open file, block millimeter, now I get this block that is actually the size I need it to be, and that's because my slicer environment talks only in millimeters. There's ways to change that up, but I'm gonna keep this as the default program is millimeters. So for me, I know as I tell all my students, export to millimeters and then we'll change it from there if we need to. Okay, so now the thing to talk about is, I'm gonna get this out of here, I'm gonna delete on that, is good printing setup. And so under here for the recommended, there is uh, the recommended tab, there's zero, 20%, 50, uh, and what I would recommend for you to do is spend some time with these custom settings because as you get more and more involved into the 3D printing process, you'll understand that you'll be able to save some time by adjusting some of these settings. And so if the part is not gonna be under much stress, infill density, I just do 10%. So it automatically cuts down in half my material being used typically um, and it speeds up the printing process. Support is the next thing, and so we want to generate support everywhere. And so um, support is if my object has an overhang, it's gonna 3D print material underneath it to build up to that overhang. So if I've got this part right here, for example, and I'm gonna multiply real quick, 
and I had an overhang. I'm going to rotate this around. This part right here, like so. When the 3D printer is running, it's not you can't just magically 3D print into midair. There has to be a support underneath it. And so the support right here is if you have printing printing something as an overhang, you do typically want to generate that support. And then the last thing which I consider the most important would be the build plate adhesion. If you're building something that is really complex and your, uh, your printer head's gonna be jogging around a lot, you really want to use uh, this raft build plate. And so what it'll do is it'll create a nice first layer of adhesion and then build on top of it. That way your, your part doesn't or tends to less want to curl or come off the build plate because that first layer is definitely the most important. And so right now, let's talk about this. If I were to click prepare, so what it's gonna do, and this is the job of the slicer, is to slice a layer by layer on how this 3D printer is supposed to work. So if I click on this view mode and I show layers, we can see as this 3D printer will go up, there's our first support layer, our first adhe adhesion plate layer, some good adhesion. Uh, if you're not used to 3D printing, I really recommend adhesion plates. They snap off pretty well, um, but if you get more and more adept into it, really have a high calibration, um, maybe that adhesion is not so much worth it or needed. And so as it builds up, we can see that the red is the outside of my surface. The yellow is that infill, so we got 10% infill right now. And then on top of it, as it continues to go up, we can see the support layer is to support this first layer of actually material for our object. And then it kind of ends at the top. And so uh, what we want to do is we want to produce objects, unless we need specifics on what the layers look like, you typically tend to want the least amount of support as possible. Don't waste that plastic. So what I'm gonna do is go back to solid and we can rotate this back around. That way it's standing straight up again. There's a couple things I'm gonna talk about is uh, these little commands on the left side right here. And so you can move your 3D prints up and down, left and right. It'll do a pretty good job automatically snapping it into the plate uh, if you do something wrong. So like say for example, if I try to print it where half my model is there, it'll do a pretty good job of snapping into place. There we go. When you are above your build plate. And so, and if you also try to run into something else too much, it'll scoot things around kind of as needed. Scale's pretty easy. Um, it just does the scale of your object. If you want it larger, make it smaller. And then rotate. Rotate's probably the one that's most important when you're 3D printing things. You want to, you know, you yeah your top face, your front face typically to be the top of your build or your, your 3D print, um, so on and so forth. And then there's a couple of settings in here that you can tinker around with, but other than that, we are good and we're ready to go. So this is this is the thing I want to 3D print. What I'm gonna do is hit prepare. It, it will tell me approximately how long it'll take to print. So this will be almost a five hour print. It is a pretty big part um, right now. Um, and so I typically uh, tend to bump down that infill density if it's something not necessarily going to be on a whole lot of force or stress. Um, but that is about the approximate for print, that couple hour range for something kind of simple like this. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to throw them down in the comment section. This video hopefully has going to have some audio to it. You can hear it to me this time. Uh, up next soon, we're going to do some videos on trammels and doing some of our first revolutions and mates and constraints. And I'm really excited for the next kind of couple videos. Cool. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free uh, to reach out to me however you need. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next video.